Steve, good morning. Anybody else jumping on? Y'all know what to do. Drop who you are, where you are in the comments.
People a little, <laughs> a little slow getting on. It's cool. It was a rough night for me last night. I got to bed a lot later than I wanted to, but it's all good. Still got up. Uh, I hit the snooze. I got to admit, I did hit the snooze more than once this morning. But I did get up, and I said, you know what? I'm going to get up. I'm going to make sure we do this live. Uh, today, I wasn't the only reason that I'm up. I'm normally up pretty early in the mornings. But yeah, today was a, a, a rough morning, <laughs> to say the least, to try to get up. But nonetheless, I am here, and uh, I'm just kind of working through. If any of you didn't recognize that tune, that's uh, a song from my album, Life, called The Way It Is. The song is in seven, that in terms of the time. It's uh, five, six, seven. Got, it's available on my website. If you want the play along track for this song, it's available on my website with the full band and the bass is taken out of the song. So if you want to listen to the original first, uh, you can stream the original here on YouTube or you can purchase it off uh, iTunes. Either way, it doesn't matter. But the play along is definitely available on my website for this song. So if you're working on trying to like get better at different time signatures, and that kind of thing, uh, or you want to kind of play around with seven, you know, that time signature. Let me see if I can find it here, give you an idea of what to expect. Because uh, I think it, it's, it's something that really comes in handy when you're really trying to work on this stuff. Rather than playing with the metronome, you can actually get something that, that sounds, you know, kind of like a real band playing with you. This is the play along for this track right here. Uh, let's see what's what's... What we got going on here? I hadn't opened this one in a while. Let's see what we got happening. Yeah, there we go. So it, it opens with me playing the intro to give you the foundation of you know where everything is at. But that's pretty much the meat and potatoes of the song. As you can hear, there's no bass there, but the, everything else is there, like the keyboard, drums, guitar, 
everything, I just need you. And so, a good, it's, it's, to me, that's a good way, it's not necessarily my subject today, but that's a good way to start training your ears to go get the original record or go stream the original record, just look up The Way It Is by Jermaine Morgan here on YouTube. You can pull up the original record and just stream it live here. Or not live, y'all know what I mean. You can stream it on uh, YouTube right now. Don't go do it now. But <laughs> open a separate window. But yeah, so go ahead and uh, appreciate that, Steven. So yeah, go ahead and grab that and just listen to it. Learn that song and then you can get that download that, uh, I think it's only like 99 cents on the website. You can download that play along from my website, JermaineMorgan.net, and you can play with it. And you know, there's room for the solo sections. I think I left the bass in when it comes to the solo section. Let's see here. Yeah, so you got the bass that's in there for the solo sections so that you can go ahead and implement your own solos over the seven. This is straight, you know. Same thing. in there you can hear it real time just kind of get comfortable with playing over different time signatures and that's something I know people don't really dive into a lot we're used to the more common time signatures like 4-4 four, four, uh, maybe 3-4 maybe even 6-8 but once it comes to those odd time signatures a lot of us shy away from kind of playing around with them unless we're you know we've been doing this for a while but a lot of bass players. And the, the thing I really try to do in this particular song, I'm, I'm trying to give some more people time to jump on, but the thing I try to do in this particular song when I wrote it, I didn't realize I was trying to do it. But uh, when I approach an odd time signature, especially now, I, um, I, try, I try to make even the time signature feel as normal as possible. So even as you're listening to this, you can tell that it's a little different from a normal uh, groove, but it doesn't have the usual, okay, guess the time signature thing going on. It You can kind of keep nodding your head, keep flowing with just the way that the melody goes uh, with this song. Yeah. But the cool thing about that, Steve, is that even though you probably had a hard time figuring out the time of it, the melody still kind of carried you through, hopefully, the melody still kind of carried you through the song to where it wasn't difficult to listen to. You know what I'm saying? Once you start counting, it might take you a minute to count it, but as far as easy listening, being able to listen to it and enjoy it, hopefully the, me the melody carried you through the song in a way that you were able to still enjoy the song. So that was my whole thing with that. So, all right, today's topic, uh, what, what, did I, what did I write? Uh, the one mistake, <laughs> I got to remember this stuff, there's a lot going on. So, the one mistake musicians make. What is that one mistake most musicians make? Not all musicians, but most musicians in particular. Musicians who have been playing for a while, musicians who have become somewhat accomplished in a sense. Um... And I mean, cats, if you're playing at a regular gig anywhere, I mean, whether you're at church, you've got a rock group or whatever the case may be, the one mistake that I see most musicians make is that once they feel like they've reached a level of maturity or as a musician or they, they've arrived to a certain degree, they stop practicing. That's the one mistake that I see people uh, appreciate that, see? Uh, that's that's the one mistake I see people making is they stop practicing. They literally stop practicing. If they feel like, okay, I've gotten to this point, I've gotten this gig, 
You know, I've gotten to this point in my playing. I'm pretty fast. I'm pretty solid. I know all my skills. I know all my theory. I know everything, which that's never the truth. Nobody ever knows anything. But people get to this complacent place where they stop practicing. I'm guilty of that sometimes. Roland, I, man, we we all are. Man, that's the thing. What made me want to um, kind of address this for most bass players. And if you're guilty, of that don't, don't feel condemned. Just raise your little hand with an emoji and say I or something, because <laughs> I know I'm not the only one. We it's, it's not. And, and let me rephrase the thing. I don't believe it's anybody. Granted, there are a few arrogant people out there, but I don't believe it's because we're saying I've arrived and I've made it. It's just we get to this place of complacency. It's like, OK, I know how to do this. Or I know how to to play this particular gig. Or if it's like I say, some of you guys might be playing in a church. That's the most common thing for you know, us to do on a consistent basis, either a group, a, 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 a little gig on the weekends or playing at a church or, you know, having a little, uh, some type of little gig. It's like, you know what I'm saying? We, and, and let me know where you got, cause I don't know who I'm talking to. Let me know. I see uh, Steve, you play in church. Let me know where you play at. Like, what are the venues? What are you doing? Are you playing at church or, you know what I'm saying? Let me know what type of gigs you're playing in. No consistency in practice. The love of the plan becomes a job. Exactly, man. That's one of the one of the things. One of the points is that we lose that love for doing it because it gets redundant. It gets old. It, we know we already know the format. It's like okay, I'm gonna get this amount of songs I have to do. Or if you're in a cover band, all right. Once I learn these thirty to forty cover songs, I do that initial work to learning those songs. After that point, it's like it's smooth sailing. There's only so many ways you can play Mustang Sally or something like that, you know, so I'm not going to practice. I'm not going to put that time in. I see you, Steven. Uh, I'm not going to put that time in and I'm not going to practice. And it, it's not I don't believe it's intentional. I think it's one of those things because it's not as pressing as it once was when you were trying to get a gig. It's not as pressing at my local church and in different church events. Got you, Steve. Um Got a lot of Steve and Stevens on here this morning. <laughs> so somebody else chime in. Who else? What other names we got in here this morning? I don't feel like I'm just talking to Steve and Steven. I'm saying that same name over and over again. But I appreciate y'all coming. I'm not clowning y'all at all. I'm just saying. <laughs> Listen, come on here. Uh -huh, I see you. Chisholm. Uh -huh, I play in church. Yep. I see you. So uh, who else we got? Claudius. Good morning, man. <clears throat> so yeah, so that's that's one of the things people quit practicing and I, I think it like I said I don't believe it's intentional. I think it's we get comfortable. We know what we got to do Who is that Roland say he play at church? I see you rolling. So We get comfortable. We know okay. I get these songs. We have a rehearsal It's not gonna take me long to learn these songs And so I go through this song. I learn the music that's considered my practice and in a sense it is but you're learning material there. That's a form of practice, and that's very good because you're keeping you're keeping something going to where you're having your mind to think and you're having your hands to move. But don't you know, as soon as you get complacent, as soon as you get to the point where you feel like, okay, I got this, I don't have to do this, you start getting dated. Was that Daryl said he plays at church in Indiana? Okay, got you, got you, Daryl. Um, so we get to this place and once we feel like or whatever, we think we don't have to practice. We think we're in the safe zone. Let's say that we think we're in the safe zone. We don't continue practicing. And the next thing you know, you're starting to become dated. You don't realize it until uh, you hear somebody else, especially now you jump online and you hear everything everybody else is playing. And you're like, wait a minute, where did all this come from? And, and let me be clear with this. I'm not trying to create a sense of fear into anybody to make you feel like you got to keep up with the latest thing and all this kind of, I, I'm not trying to create that sense of fear. But what I am trying to do is make sure that you maintain that uh, sense of urgency that I need to keep going. I need to keep practicing. What's that? I know for me, I right, hold on here. What is Roland saying? Um, I know for me, I'm not playing the bass every week like I used to anymore. I've switched over to the keys button. Yeah, I, I get it, Roland. It's and it's the same thing for me. Um, since I'm not doing the um 
Seems like we can get sloppy fat. Man, I'm telling you, since I'm not doing um, the church gig that I used to do where I was a music director at, since I stepped down from that position, I noticed that the intensity of how much I was playing has went down. Um, but I haven't stopped practicing, but I, I know I haven't been doing as much as I was doing. Whereas every week I'm having to learn songs, I'm having to keep that edge, I'm having to keep it sharp, and now I'm having to find other ways to do that, even with the lessons and everything, trying to make sure that I'm keeping my mind sharp and pulling out some music every now and again, refreshing, going over some stuff, and make sure I'm just keeping this up under my fingers because, again, that muscle memory, you'll kind of, when you're not being pushed, you're not being stretched, your muscle memory is going to settle in. It's kind of like when you don't run. Think about it. When you're young, you're running all the time. Like my son, he's four years old. He runs everywhere for no, no, he's five. God dog, I done missed the whole year. <laughs> my son is five. He runs everywhere for no reason. He runs everywhere for no reason. Same thing with my baby. She's two years old. She's running all over the house. And so it's no big deal for them to run. Like my son can run. It's 137 degrees outside. He's running wide open. <laughs> and, 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 you know, he stops. Every now and again, he's breathing hard, but most of the time, it's like it's not even phasing him. Like, Jonathan, take a break, man. I'm fine. You know, it's hot outside, man. You are running. For us, on the other hand, we run from here to the front door, and it's like, we're... <sighs> Hold on, let me, let me catch my breath. Unless you're a runner, unless you're somebody that jogs and you regularly run and you train all the time, or you do something to kind of keep that cardio going, to keep your heart rate kind of normal... Once you start doing those things that you don't necessarily do, Eliezer, uh, good morning, man. Montreal, Canada. You, so you playing at church there in Canada. I see you. Um, so it's like it, once we stop doing those things to keep that heart, if you're a runner or if you're somebody that works out, I notice for me, if I start falling off of my workouts, I jump in here, try to do some push-ups. I do about <laughs> do about 20 and I'm out of breath. It's like, wait a minute. Now, so I'm, I done fell off or something like that because I'm normally used to, I do sets, but I'm used to kind of being able to do more, you know, in a single set. But when, when I'm starting to notice myself getting winded after a few, okay, I need to pick back up the pace because I've slowed down. It's the same thing when it comes to your playing. You can feel like, okay, I'm doing enough. But it's just like walking. If you walk all the time and you stop running, you're getting a little older, you stop running as much as you used to, you don't you don't race anybody anymore. It ain't that testosterone that's normally going for young men, like, of course, in high school and everything. We want to race and beat everybody to show everybody who's the fastest. The older you get, you don't care nothing about that. You can be fast. Go ahead. Rock out. I'm going to drive. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You're not thinking about that whole thing of competition so you slow down and you get real laid back and that kind of thing you don't run you don't jog as much anymore so the times that you do try to to run it's like you're out of breath i played a church here in augusta georgia man you on point this morning i've reached a place where i'm getting uh i'm getting bored of my plan so now i have gotten to place yep yep <clears throat> and, and the thing is we all hit that place from time to time. So that's why I, I, I encourage um, people to constantly push yourself. And if you're not an easily self-motivated person, there are tools. There are, there are resources out there like YouTube, like, you know, lessons and things like that. If you have someone in your city that can keep you inspired. If you go to sheds, I don't necessarily care for a lot of shared environments, but they are definitely helpful because they do keep you sharp. I will say that. Now, that's one thing I will say. You know, the younger generation, they have this mentality, especially, especially drummers. To me, out of all the musicians, it seems like the drummers are the ones who dig in the deepest when it comes to practicing and just keep that practice going because drummers will get together and they have shared all the time. And if anybody don't know what shared means, I mean, they'll get together and share ideas practicing. They all jam out. It's a big jam session where everybody is just kind of going for it. The thing about those uh, shared environments that I do like uh, is that it does push you. If you go to one every now and again or once a month or whenever you go, I'm for unfortunately, I'm not in a place where I can kind of go to those because I don't really have any musicians around me uh, where I'm at. And beforehand, when I was around more people, I was too busy to have time to, to do that. And I understand some of you guys may be as busy 
as well. But if you're in a place where you can kind of get around some musicians or you know that there's a shed or a local jam session happening, it'll be a good thing to try to get out to that. Because what it does, it, it keeps you sharp. It keeps you hearing things uh, in, in terms of kind of like hearing what other cats are playing. And like I said earlier, not to put that fear in you that I got to try to keep up with everybody else, but to stay sharp, you know, to work on your own crap. You don't have to necessarily play what everybody else is playing, but you do need to be aware of what everybody else is playing. You don't have to do that. You don't have to become a copycat. We all want to be original. We all want to be originators of what it is that we do well, but we want to make sure that we're relevant and we're not playing stuff, you know, that's like super dated. And I ain't talking about the stuff that's old and now it's coming back. <laughs> you know, I'm talking about your stuff that you've been playing since 1997 and it wasn't really that cool then, but you're still trying to do it. That's the stuff I'm, <laughs> that's the stuff I'm talking about, that you really hadn't really mastered that stuff, but you just kind of do it because it's your go-to stuff. Working your way out of that, constantly breaking down those glass ceilings and making yourself better and better and better. Let me see here. I missed a comment. My practice regression is mostly due to time management and my uh, station in life at this time. That said, as I'm typing, so I realize that both the reasons are excuses. Yeah, I mean, we hate to say it, but that's, that's pretty much what it is, man, um, at the end of the day. Because think about it, if it came down, and this is how we can kind of really quickly eliminate any excuse that we may have for not practicing, and I'm guilty of it myself, uh, but if there were a dream gig or something like that that came up and just say, even what you have in your current job, your current gig, whatever it is you do that keep you so busy, whoever you are that's watching this, if you had <clears throat> your ideal dream gig or your dream situation for you as a musician to come about you had two days to prepare what would you do to make sure that you didn't blow that opportunity i'm saying you still got your same everything that that you got going on still happening you still working your nine to five or your your five to eleven or whatever the case you whatever <laughs> position you do uh shift you work you still have that going on maybe you're driving a truck whatever the case may be and you're just tired all the time but if you had the opportunity of a lifetime and you had two days to prepare how would you adjust to make sure that you were ready for when that opportunity presented itself what would you do i'll wait <laughs> so my, my my thing with that is why not why not treat every single day or every week like that's going to happen because the reality of it is you just never know when it's going to happen and they say it's better to be ready so you don't have to get ready it's better to be prepared so you don't have to get prepared if you know these opportunities are possibly going to happen even if you don't believe they're going to happen and a lot of that has to do with your belief system and how you process things because that's one thing about it. If you don't believe you're going to have anything to come up for you, you don't ever believe that you're going to get out of that whatever gig that you're doing and you're going to play there for the rest of your life. Maybe some of you are okay with that idea, but for the ones of you who are not okay with that and you know it's something better, it's something greater that you can be doing, you have to prepare for that. I'm telling you, you have to, yeah, be ready in every season. You have to be ready so you have to be practicing. You have to be working. You have to be hungry. If you need the extra assistance, get help. Go get some lessons. Go sign up for some lessons. Daniel, what's up, man? Oh, wow, man. Thank you, Daniel. So Daniel's a phenomenal bass player, by the way. If you guys are not following his YouTube channel, go ahead and do that now. So Daniel Singh, so phenomenal bass player from Australia. But yeah, man, so if you know that gig has the potential to come up at some point why wouldn't you be prepared don't wait until that opportunity presents itself to you now you start practicing now you're in panic mode you're scrambling uh you know what i'm saying so you floyd what's up man so you have to you have to work to be ready at all times because you'll never know when it's going to jump off now here's the other thing with that uh oh yeah 
Oh yeah, Daniel, he's a beast, man. So here's a, here's the other thing with that. Now, if you're on a gig, especially if you're on a good gig, and you're kind of complacent on that gig because you know I done the work and I put in the energy, I put in the effort and all this stuff, you might be doing all the right stuff in terms of showing up on time, learning the music, being faithful, and all this kind of stuff, but if you have become complacent in your playing and you're not constantly advancing, you're not constantly getting better, you're not constantly growing, you're not constantly pushing the musical situation. You could be cool and solid. I'm talking about playing the songs, playing everything. What is that? The Don't Worry, Be Happy video of yours is crazy. Oh, man, thank you. Um, so if, 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 you, um, if you get complacent, do know that there's somebody sitting out there in that audience that's waiting. They're hungry. And that's the thing about it. That's the other thing about it. There are other people out there who are hungry for what you have. That's the problem. Once we get things, it's like we get too comfortable and we get laid back and we stop pushing. We stop grinding as hard as we were before we got that gig or before we got to this place in our playing. Even if you're not playing a gig and you have some other kind of situation where like maybe your studio, your main call for studio situations and you stop grinding as hard, you stop digging as hard, you stop coming up with fresh new ideas and that kind of thing. Now you're putting yourself in a position where they're looking for somebody who brings a little bit more to the table. And if you're not that guy, guess what? They're going to find that person that does that. And you can think everything is fine. Your last session was a blast. And it can be the producer could be sitting there like, eh, I mean, he's cool. He's solid, but he's not really bringing anything. He's not really adding anything to the song other than, the, you know, meat and potatoes. And I'm kind of looking for a little bit more. And if you don't have anything else to add, that makes you easily replaceable. Uh, I'm the guy in the crowd waiting. <laughs> not at a place, but I love to be in my... Okay, once that door is open, I'm... you know what I'm saying? That's that's what it's about, Steve. And the thing, we're all at that place. At in, in some point. What's that, Daryl? I see you. And Jimmy, uh, what about working musicians? They're not season. That's not season. Well, that's the thing. That's the other thing you have to deal with. People are getting gigs who are not ready. I mean, who are not seasoned. I'm not saying they're not ready. Let me rephrase that statement. You have a, a breakdown of stuff that a lot of times it comes to money. So that that's why sometimes when I say you could be doing all the right things, if they feel like they're paying you too much and you're doing all the right stuff, but you kind of missing out on that growing thing or you're not growing as fast as they would like for you to grow. That kind of makes you a target, especially if you're kind of high in the pay. Uh, a thing about a lot of the younger musicians that are coming up, they are hungry and they're willing to take less to do the same job. That kind of doesn't make it better for most musicians who've been out there playing for a while and who've been established because now they're taking the pay scale down for everybody. The younger musicians don't realize it because they're just trying to get a chance. They're just trying to get a shot. They're just trying to get in. You know, I'll take anything. Just, just give me a gig. You know what I'm saying? Because most of them don't have any responsibilities. Most of them still living at home with their parents or most of them are living with a roommate. They don't have any kids. They don't have a wife. They don't have a car. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, I just want somewhere to play, make a little bit of money and go buy another PlayStation game or something like that. It's like, no, no shade to nobody. I'm just saying when you don't have those priorities or you don't have those other responsibilities, a lot of times it's like your drive uh, to make more money or to, to attain more, especially if you haven't been doing it that long as a professional, meaning getting paid. And I talked about that in a whole other thing uh, about the professional versus getting paid and all that kind of stuff. But if you haven't been getting paid doing this that long or you hadn't been on a gig that long, you don't really see the value of getting a little bit more of being compensated. You don't know the value of your time. There we go. A better way of saying it. You don't completely know the value of your time. So people will take a lesser amount of money or will take the lesser just to get the opportunity. And there's nothing wrong with that. I've done that. But you don't want that to always be the case. That you're always doing these little chitlin' circuit things to... Um, just to make money, or to, I'm sorry, just to have an opportunity to play. 
you want to make sure that there's a balance there. We want to make sure we stay sharp. We want to make sure that we're playing, but at the same time, don't lose your value system in that. So, uh, what's that? I miss, did I miss something? I'm sorry for moving my phone, guys. Uh, on my recording device, if you will, I'm doing this on my phone. Um, but that that's a, to me that those are some of the things you want to be aware of. There is somebody out there in the audience who is hungry. What you're saying, Jimmy? Uh, have you ever worked with musicians that are not on your level? If so, how do you deal with that? Of course, work with people all the time that are not on my level. But it, it depends on. That has a lot to do with your personal attitude. The thing for me is I grew up in an environment where I'm, my brother and I played when when it, uh, I was growing up. I was most of the time on guitar or drums or some other instrument. My brother played the uh, the uh, the piano, keyboard, organ, all that kind of stuff. See, that's what I'm talking about. Hold on. I'm missing all kinds of stuff. The last day what I call it. The advance some players believe by just providing the foundation, that's good enough. Yeah, some folks do. Uh, to answer the question about how do you deal with people that are not necessarily on your level, it's all about your attitude. All you can do as a musician is work to inspire. If you're stuck in that position that the musician who are musicians who you are playing with are not on your level, you have to make sure that the music stays the main thing. That's the main thing. Keep Like they say, keep the main thing the main thing. First of all, make sure your ego is in check. Now, I'll let that simmer for a second. You have to make sure that your ego is in check because if you are a musician who's constantly pushing, you have to know that you're not in the, the majority because the majority of musicians aren't all pushing. There is a majority of musicians who are pushing to try to make themselves better. There is a, a, a group of musicians who are like trying to, you know, just keep the job. There are musicians who are satisfied at the fact that they learn how to play and they got somewhere to play and they're good. They're not trying to like get on TV. They're not trying to tour with anybody. They're not trying to do anything more than that little local gig that they have, the church gig or the bar gig or just you know, doing something that can make a little extra little change for the week. They are just happy that they learn how to play anything. And there's nothing wrong with that. I want to just uh, make that clear. What's up, Scott? Um, I want to just make that clear. We have to make sure that we don't let our ego, because some of us are completely passionate, like myself, about music, and we're completely sold out. That's what we want to do. Everything is music. You have to understand there are some people who are in this world, who are in this music world with us, that will be at church, that will be volunteering at church. What's up, Oscar? Uh, yes, sir. So you, you got to understand you have people who will be volunteering or people who will be even getting paid uh, to, play, uh, to playing at a church or playing at something with you. And music is not their life. Music is not their just passion. They love it and they enjoy doing it and they enjoy helping they enjoy being a help but that's not their life they might be passionate about it. they might be a dentist you know what i'm saying they might be something else to where they love music but that's not their life so they're not going to put in the same amount of time or the same amount of energy that you're going to be putting in so you have to make your decision do i want to stay here and be a part of that or do I want to go somewhere else and be in an environment where that's what everybody's doing? Everybody's thing is music. I played for years in environments where I was the only one that was truly passionate about music and growing and growing. It sounded like this one phenomenal player and everybody else around me sucked. And I give that off with my body language, with my attitude, with how I act with people. You know what I'm saying? It's like, that's something that I've seen. I talked about this at Share for Cause. If any of you are near Mississippi, side note, if any of you are near Mississippi, I come to Mississippi every year and I do a shed right before Thanksgiving uh, in Tupelo, Mississippi called Share for Cause. And I've talked about this particular subject. A lot of musicians gather together. You never know who's going to be here. Sorry, didn't mean to in interject that. But if you're not there, think about making plans to come to Mississippi around Thanksgiving and come to Share for Cause. All right, in the commercial. <laughs> but yeah, I, I, something I talked about. You have to make sure that you guys 
Keep your attitude, keep your ego in check. It's not wrong with having ego, but too much ego can ruin stuff. It can ruin the experience. It can ruin stuff that you could gain because there are people who are not necessarily the musician that you are in terms of the skill level or the skill set, but there's some wisdom there. We can gain wisdom from everybody. We can gain some type of knowledge from everybody. Even if you feel like that person is not on your level, it may be something that they have that you need. And that's the reason why you're in that environment. Maybe their tolerance for certain things is a little better than yours. You're a great musician, but maybe you're impatient. You know what I'm saying? Maybe. Good morning, Edward. Um, uh, well, thank you, man. I appreciate that. So, so maybe there's something you can pull away from that. Maybe even when you're playing songs, like there's people that I play with and I know how the song go. I learn the song like the record, but I know this person is not going to play the chords like the song goes, or they're going to kind of do some other stuff in the song that don't necessarily make sense with the record. But me using my ears and me trying to make sure that we all sound like a band instead of playing, that's not right, you know, yelling at them and spending the whole entire time aggravated and just frustrated, I can make sure that, okay, clearly they don't, they're, they don't understand. And they're not going to be replaced anytime soon because that, this person could be just volunteering. It's like... <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Like they, they could just be volunteering. So I have to figure out a way to coexist with these people. So I have to make sure if I can't teach them the right thing in the band rehearsal or try to show them, okay, play this chord instead of that chord. Well, if we're just getting in, we're playing in a place that we all just got called in for the gig or I just happen to be sitting in. I just got to make sure that we sound like a band. If they're going this way, I got to at least meet them halfway since they're not going to meet me halfway so that at the end of the day, the song is not the thing that's sacrificed. The song can never be the thing that's sacrificed. The song is the most important. The groove and all that kind of stuff, that's the most important thing. Not me just stroking my own ego of knowing, okay, I'm the best thing up here and everybody else needs to raise up to my level. Well, that might be true in some instances, but at the same time, I'm not saying lower your standards, but I am saying raise your tolerance level. You know what I'm saying? Because you're going to be on some gigs where people are as good as you and a lot of people are better than you and you're the weakest leak in the band. So now you have to consider that because none of us are the best in the world. So you're going to be in some situations to where you're the one that's taken too long to learn a part or you're the one who didn't come in prepared for this particular gig. So now you're the one that's causing a problem. So that same grace that you didn't give is now not being shown to you. But on the flip side of it, if you are able to show grace and to kind of calm your ego down a little bit, not saying, and, and for the person that asked that question, I'm not saying that you have an ego. I know that was a really relevant question. A lot of musicians deal with that, especially when we're hungry. We're paying for lessons. We're trying to get better. Then it seems like everybody else is not pushing. I get it. I understand it. I felt the same way for years. But we have to learn how to control that ego so that that ego doesn't get out. And I see the comments and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to come back to the comments so that that ego doesn't get out of control and we're able to give people grace. So when it's our time, we can receive that same grace and we can receive that same compassion. Sorry for saying all that too long. I don't miss too many comments here. Let's go up. Let's go up. Let's go up. Let's go up. All right. Uh, yeah. All right. So I think I'm right. Mr. Anderson loves you. Please share that data everywhere. I'm going to share it everywhere. I normally share that. And he's talking about um, he's talking about my date to do share for a cause. Share for a cause is normally the Wednesday before Thanksgiving every year. It's the Wednesday before Thanksgiving. One year was like a Tuesday, but generally, generally it's like the Wednesday before Thanksgiving. What it is, it's like a, a, uh, a shed slash food drive. We get together in Northeast Mississippi. We get together. I'm not, I don't live in Mississippi. I'm from Mississippi, but I, when I go back to Mississippi for that, um, we get together and we do a food drive for people who are less fortunate, less fortunate families. We raise money 
And that's the rules of engagement. You have to bring some type of food item. And this is way off in November before Thanksgiving. So don't don't worry. You're not going to miss it anytime soon. So, all right. So, <laughs> but we do some type of food drive and we, every person brings something. They bring some food, whether it's a, a, a non-perishable item, a gift card, some canned food, something. They bring something. Normally I'm giving out gifts. I'm giving out prizes at the end of the night from my sponsors, my uh, different companies that I endorse. I always bring something to give away, and that's the perk of it. But the other thing is just the camaraderie, the, the being able to, to link up with like-minded people who are all trying to grow, who are all trying to get better, get insight, get nuggets, get wisdom. I learn as much as everybody else learns. I'm not the only one up there just running my mouth. It's plenty of people who are phenomenal in the area. Some people you may know, some people you might not know, but uh, we've had everybody to come through. So I'm trying to rush and get back to the comments. But yeah, I'll share the date. If you're not following me on social media, be sure to follow me everywhere. Uh, Facebook, uh, Jermaine Morgan. Uh, I got two pages. If you can't get on my personal page because I'm maxed out, I've been maxed out for a minute. Uh, be sure to follow my artist page. Of course, anybody can follow that page and you can get in. You can still get all the information there. I'm going to be sharing stuff. Instagram, J Morgan Base. Twitter, J Morgan Base. All right? J Morgan Base. No underscore anything like that. So, all right. I'm sorry, y'all. I'm trying to. So, all right. I'm sorry, y'all. I'm trying to answer the questions as quickly as I can. And keep the comments coming. Y'all are not bothering me at all. I'm just trying to make sure I answer everybody's questions as quick as I can. Um, that's all the time, bro. J, I, JR, I don't know exactly what you're talking about. You're probably talking about something that I was talking about earlier when we were talking about the different players. David, I see you. I can relate. Daryl, one strategy that kind of works in terms of practicing is self-assessing my growth as needed. For instance, I can see my growth and how I've enhanced my sound. Pell effects tone. Yep. Self-assessing always is something good. And I've, I've talked about that in several lessons. By recording yourself, kind of seeing where you are by simply recording yourself, going back and listening to performances or just, I mean, just even in your room, play along with the song. And like once you think you really got the song down pat, turn on something and record yourself. And don't say you don't have anything to record yourself because now it's as easy as getting your phone out and pressing record. Almost everybody's phone have, has a record option now. Plug your amp up. Turn that music up and play to it. That's all you need. And just really listen to what you're doing and see how it matches up with that record. And if you're getting better, you know, you keep doing that. Keep listening to yourself, being honest with yourself. That's going to help you grow. Uh, so, yeah, thank you for that, Daryl. Um, JR, some, music, some musician, you can tell anything too, bro. Yeah. Uh, hold on here. Hold on here. All right. I'm not. I want to embarrass myself with all this new equipment. Oh man, it's all good. Yeah, I mean, you you want to put yourself out there. You want to make some mistakes. At least you'll know what not to do next time. So go for it, man. Uh, I agree. It's almost your role to keep it together like that. Yep. Especially as if you're ba if everybody on here is bass players, you have to you have to make sure that you're keeping that foundation together. I mean, you're the founder. You're holding everything together. You and the drummer are keeping everything grounded. So if you know that, uh, back on the subject of if a musician is not playing the right chord, for instance, if you're in church, and some of y'all that play in church, you know exactly what I mean. You know, you got them old folks that still play. I'm sorry for saying old. You got older musicians that learn to play one type of way, and that's all they know. And it's really difficult for them to change now because they didn't keep, you know, they didn't keep honing their skills. So you know they got this little one pass that they're going to play on almost every song, but it don't match what this song is. Your thing is to figure out a way to incorporate what they're doing into how the song really goes, but make it sound like it was intentional instead of looking over there, rolling your eyes, because you know they're going to play that same thing every time. Don't get frustrated. Just figure out ways. You figure out tricks to make it sound like a band, like it was intentional and we meant to do this regardless of how it sounds, because at the end of the day, most of the audience doesn't know anyway. You just have to make sure that you're keeping that foundation, keeping everything grounded uh, to that point. Uh, let's see here. All right. I'm a Daniel. I see you, Jerry. 
Yo, Jay, I agree with what you're saying. Uh, we have a saying amongst musicians here in Sydney. Vibe over perfection. The live vibe always trumps trying to play the song. Is like, hey, of course. And, and Daniel, that's that's coming from a seasoned musician. That Now, that's what I call seasoned. Like, just being able to know that that vibe, man, that, that vibe and that groove is the most important thing. Or the song, you know, for lack of better words. That song is the most important. Not you standing out and everybody seeing how well you learn this song. Because, I mean, what difference does it make if it throws everybody off? Because y'all are playing two completely different things and y'all are clashing. There is no good energy there. So you can't enjoy yourself because y'all kind of warm with one another. And you'll notice once you kind of meet this person halfway, you'll start finding good things that they do. And let me say this. Compliment. Compliment your bandmates, compliment your band members, and you'll see how much that encourages people to push, to practice. I've said this before, but start complimenting one another. We, like, sometimes us musicians, especially some of the younger crowd, and I've been guilty of it when I was younger, because, you know, you get a little cocky once you're in an area where everybody's not growing as fast as you are, and you can start kind of looking down your nose at other people as if, Oh man, they suck or they ain't doing this and they ain't doing that. Instead of and they can be in your own band instead of complimenting and giving credit for stuff that they are doing well. That encourages people to push harder and to work on some other stuff so they can continue to grow. And when they grow, you grow, you push the band forward. And now it's a better environment that everybody enjoys in terms of the musical environment. Now that that makes room for creating. By the way, side note, y'all see this shirt. I need y'all to go grab this merch. Anything you see, with say it with your strings. I got distracted. I looked at the camera. So <laughs> anything you see with say it with your strings on it, that's 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 your boy. Go ahead and support. Go ahead and you can look at the bottom of this video or the bottom of any of my videos. I have merch, y'all. I have merch. I need y'all to grab that and share it. Let somebody know what's up. Let them know what's up. Say it with your strings. Rock the gear. Join the movement. All right. I'm telling y'all, I'm giving y'all these commercials today. Y'all, I mean, y'all got to get with me. I'm giving you these commercials. <laughs> so, all right, let me see here. Uh, I met Jake at Daryl Clayton. Good advice. Um, living in 2019 is very easy to access. A lot on the internet. You can you can find anything almost on YouTube. You need and then the film and then film yourself and critique. Of course, yep, you're right, Jake. Yo, down y'all, I've seen around YouTube. Okay, you're talking to down. You ain't even talking to me. <laughs> so, Jimmy, uh, I met you. This is true. Thanks, bro. It's my pleasure. Daryl, uh, great point. Grooving with the others. I was weak. I was a weak link at the previous church, and now I'm the more steady musician. So, your point on ego management is huge. Yeah, Daryl, and, and, and it really stands out when you're the one that's the weakest link. That's when it really stands out because you notice everybody's ego. When you're the one struggling with the music, or when you're the one that's having a problem, you notice everything everybody else is doing and how everybody's looking at you and how it makes you feel. So if we can keep that in the forefront of our minds and always keep ourselves reminded of, I know how it felt when I didn't know. And circumstances prevented me from learning the music. As I said at the beginning of this video, it's not because all of us think we're better or think we don't need to practice like sometimes it's just stuff that's out of our control that has us to the point that we just can't practice like we want to we can just be completely ran down from a job i mean i get it man you could just be completely exhausted when you get home you're not getting enough sleep you're not resting you could be having some stuff going on with your marriage or some stuff going on with your kids folks are sick you're trying to care for them there's a ton of things so please don't take this um, particular post as a personal attack on you and, and start to feel bad because you're not being able to, to practice or you're not being able to do the things you need to do. Uh, don't take this as a personal attack. I understand life happens, man. It happens and it happens to all of us. And we all have those things that, you know, that just pull and nag at us. But you have to find the balance in that. Because like I said, if that if that perfect gig, that perfect opportunity came about, you're going to find a time. You're going to find something. You're going to find a way to make it happen. And there's this term that I'm working on even with myself. Your need to must become a must. The need 
it got to become a must. I mean, I need to get better, man. I know I need to practice. No, I must practice. I must get better. That has to become the mentality. That has to become the mindset. Because if it doesn't, you'll stay complacent with where you are. You're not going to try to grow. You're going to stay right there where you are. And you will always have an excuse to why you can't get any better. As long as it remains a need instead of a must. So that need to practice must become a must. All right, I'm saying must too much. Must, must, must. Yeah, all right. <laughs> all right, let's see here. Jimmy, have you ever played with a keyboard player that plays the bass? Of course, that's part of the rite of passage of a bass player. You have to do that. <laughs> you have to play with a keyboard player. I see it's so funny on Facebook and other uh, Instagram uh, and other platforms. The seeing, you know, a lot of professional players. I think Anthony Crawford, phenomenal bassist, he posted something about that the other day. He's like, my three pet peeves. Keyboard player playing the bass line, number one. Number two, keyboard player playing the bass line, number two. Number three, keyboard player. <laughs> so you get the point. It's like, we all deal with it from time to time. You're going to run into that situation where you're going to have that keyboard player that's up there in your register that's playing that bass line. It's like, just... I mean, just deal with it because soon it'll be over. If it's a situation where you have to play with that person every week, maybe you can convince them to take their little uh, bass line up an octave. Like, just at least, if you're not going to stop doing it, at least play it up here in this octave instead of down here in the lower register in my way. You know what I'm saying? Or uh, just pick your left hand up and tie it behind your back or something. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so, yeah, I definitely have dealt with that. Again, it's one of them things. Keep your ego in check. Try to make light of the situation. Don't take it personal. That's just some way that that's just the way that a lot of people learn to play because they had to play by themselves for years. And so a habit doesn't develop overnight. So it's hard to break a habit overnight. So it's one of the things. Keep your ego in check. If you hadn't said anything to them about it, mention it, but mention it to them in the right spirit. Don't come. Hey, yo, man, you in my lane, man. Come on. I quit playing the baseline. Don't 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 do that. Don't do that. It's like, yo, man, um. So when you're doing that, it's kind of clashing with what I'm playing. Can you like move it up an octave or like, you know, kind of take your root out or something like that? Something, you know what I'm saying? Like figure out a way to talk and suggest it and maybe the situation might get a little better. Let's see here. Uh, I'm at JR. I, am I saying your name right? I hope I'm saying it right. JR Woods. I see JR. That's, that's what I'm reading. So hopefully I'm saying it right. Y'all notice some of them names. If I ain't sure about them. I just go ahead and say your last name. So <laughs> I play the bass and drums. Uh, the young musician don't anything about pocket at all. Some of them do, man. You'd be surprised now. So, uh, JR, some young musicians don't know anything about pocket, and some of them do, surprisingly. Some of these young musicians are actually, to me, are better at pocket playing than some older musicians. So it depends on where you are and who you're talking about, who you're referring to. Um, so yeah, you got to be careful with that, not to generalize. And I know you, you just kind of just saying based on probably who, you know, but yeah, some of these musicians, they, they get it. Some of the young cats, they are on it. They learn in pocket because they have all these tools. They have all these resources and some of them don't, but as older players and more seasoned players, it's our job and it's our responsibility to show them if they don't know. Now for me, that's one of my pet peeves. The reason why I started creating some of the courses that I create my pet peeve was when older musicians say stuff like oh, the younger musicians don't do this or the young musicians don't do that. And the young, and I'm kind of in between in age. So I'm like, OK, if they're not doing this, is not at you. Um, but me personally, things that I've experienced over the years. OK, well, that's my opportunity to be an answer. If everybody else is not doing it, and if they don't know it, that's my opportunity to provide a solution. Now, I have something that I can give. It's something that I can give now because I see where there is a problem. So if you notice that this is a thing where the, the young musicians where you are don't understand pocket, put together some seminars and stuff. Put together some clinics and bring in some players, including yourself, to start teaching the young cats about pocket. But don't do it in a condescending type of way. Do it in a way that adds value to them and let them know, okay, this is the difference in terms of what you're doing is really great, but it needs to be tame. 
And so that's how we continue to spread that good culture of musicianship. Now they want to listen to what we have to say rather than being like, man, I don't want to hear what he has to say. Because it's like you, if they feel like we're bashing them, they're not going to want to receive anything that we have because it's something that they have that we need as well. That hunger, that energy, that excitement that has them playing all over the place. We need that again to inspire ourselves to keep growing. So it's something we both can take from one another. So we have to make sure we, we're really careful not to generalize when we make comments. You know what I'm saying? So we have to make sure that we, we do that type of stuff because beast, the young cats are going to have your gig one day. That's just that's an in inevitable truth. They're going to have your gig because at some point they're going to learn pocket. Right now they don't know it. They're all over the place because they are excited and they are learning all this new stuff, and they can't wait to use it whenever they get the opportunity. But at some point, they're going to learn, if not from you, they're going to learn from somebody what Pocket is. And because they learn, they're going to get on a gig, and now they're going to be the ones coming back and teaching these things if you don't do it. So that's how we, we have to make sure that we're inspiring um, the, the next generation. You know what I'm saying? Uh... I missed something. All right. So, JR, I wasn't, hopefully, man, you didn't take that as personal. I wasn't attacking you with responding to that. I just know that's something. It's a, it's a topic that doesn't really come up, and that's why I'm glad y'all are bringing this stuff to my attention so we can we can address it. We can, start, we can start making the next generation of musicians better instead of creating this animosity that's been created over the years amongst older musicians and younger musicians. Like there's a lot of headbutting that goes on to where the cats, the younger cats, feel like they are they're out there by themselves. They're having to figure it out by themselves. They're having to, um, you know, shed and get everything amongst their peers. Because think about when you see those videos of the shed, who are you not seeing there? You're not seeing the older players in most of them. Now, Shed for Cause is completely different. And there are other, you know, other um, jam sessions and sheds that, a lot of my colleagues or professional friends put on that they do in their cities as well. But when you see these videos posted, that's most of the time the younger cats, they're getting together and they're giving information to each other. You don't have an older, uh, more seasoned. They only have to be older because you can be seasoned and young. But you don't have more seasoned musicians that they're pouring in to the younger musicians and kind of giving them the ropes, not trying to dictate. And that's a difference between giving them information and helping them and planting seeds and dictating and trying to tell them, this is how you need to play. This is what you need to do. You don't need to be doing that. Don't do that because you're, you're stifling their growth and you're shedding and, and muzzling their voice as an individual. No, just give them a little direction and, sh and show them another way that they can do it. And what you'll find is now they're gaining respect for you because they know you respect them. When you come out and you show and you get involved, and what they're doing now, you're a voice to that generation. And they want to listen to you. They want to take what you have. Uh, let's see here. I'm missing some other stuff. Uh, 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 uh. Let's see. Okay. Yep, Hank, I see you. Most they want to self-push their ego. Yep. Uh, easy way to see if your season turned down or turn or... <laughs> Turn out a run. LOL, sometimes you know a run would be nice, but not necessarily needed. Turn out a run. It's hard to do sometimes. Oh, yeah, Roland. That's, you know, you, you know you're right with that one. Uh, thank you, because I'm experiencing exactly that, what you're talking about. God bless. Maurice, my pleasure, man. Uh, I got you, Ron. I mean, uh, Roland. Jerry, I had an organist to do that, so I, I just stopped playing. Don't stop playing, man. You just... You just got to figure out ways to navigate around it. And it's like, you can be clever. Hold on here. My phone is moving. Sorry, guys. You can be clever with it, but not, like, not sarcastic. Like, you know what I'm saying? You can go down to a higher register and start playing a guitar part. And we're going to be like, man, why are you way down here? It's like, well, I mean, you got that, so I don't want to step on your toes. It's like reverse psychology. On, oh, like, oh, my bad. Let me, you know, go ahead and let you do your thing. So it's other ways around it, or some of them may not never notice it. So it's like you gotta you gotta find ways to navigate around it without coming across as just you know facetious or whatever the case may be. Um, sounding like a lot of noise. Oh, okay, I see what you're saying, Jerry. 
when when y'all both were playing at the same time. It sounded like a lot of noise. Yeah, it can. That's what I'm saying. You got to figure out ways to work around it and maybe pull them to the side. If that's a guest musician, you might have to just let it be what it is and just let them rock out and let them have it and, you know, get back to normal once they leave. The ones I play with, I'm trying to teach how to play in the pot. Yeah, that's good, Jay. And, and make sure, and that's the, the other thing I want to make sure you, again, reiterate this this point. When when we are teaching that next generation, make sure we don't do it in a condescending way. Because when we do it in a condescending way, they won't receive what it is we have to say. And it could be good, valuable information. Uh, what is the, um, I'm on DJ. What are you saying, DJ? Agreed. It's hard to listen, construct criticism when coming from a negative place. Yep. And that's a lot of times the younger cats. You got to think this generation... The younger musicians are very, a lot of them are very defensive anyway, because they're coming from a different type of standpoint. They didn't grow up like we grew up. So you have to approach them differently. We can take stuff personal. Like I had an incident, I'll be transparent. I had an incident where I ran into a guy and uh, I felt like he came across kind of hard at, you know, at me and, and some cats that I was with for no reason. And I address it. I'm like, yo, man, like, I mean, we good. You, that, all of that ain't necessary. You don't have to do that. And, you know, and the guy is cool. And we would see this dude all the time. But this particular day, I don't know if somebody put something in his coffee. He seemed like he was having an off day. And he was just really, really snappy. And so I kind of got with him. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, I mean, you kind of coming at us a little wrong. So I kind of, because the guys that were with me, were kind of under my leadership, so to speak. So as a leader, I felt like, okay, what you're doing is not necessary and it's not, you shouldn't be doing that. So I basically, long story short, I stood up for the guys that were with me and kind of went on their behalf, kind of went to war in a sense with this guy. And I felt bad about it later. And so I came back to the guy and I apologized for the way that I talked to him. And when I talked to him, to my surprise, he didn't really think much of it. Because this is a guy, he had he was a lot older than me, uh, he, old enough to be my dad or granddad. It's like so. That's another reason why I went back and I apologized to him, just in case the way I sounded to him came across as disrespectful. I, I want him to know that look, man, I wasn't trying to disrespect you or anything like that. I just felt like you know you felt a little, you seemed a little off than what you normally are. But anyway. He let me know that, man, I ain't think nothing about that. You know, I ain't thought nothing else about it. I could tell it bothered you, but it didn't really bother me. It was just another day for me. So because this dude has been, he's been to war. He, I mean, he's seen people get killed. His perception, his perspective was completely different from mine based on how he grew up, what he's seen. So he wasn't so easily offended by certain things or he didn't take things personal or see things as a big deal as maybe I did because I didn't grow up the same way he did. I'm making that point to say the same thing with the musicians that are coming up. Everybody's so sensitive about everything now in this generation. You can't say anything to anybody about anything without people getting offended. Whereas back in the day, somebody tell you, hey, man, you're playing wrong. Go sit down, wait, listen, learn something. And you knew your place. You learned it. You took it. And you grew. But now if you say that, people get offended. They leave the church or they leave Whatever they lead a city, they don't have anything to do with you. They fall out. You don't talk to them again. This person can't stand your guts because people are so so much more sensitive now. So you have to be careful how you present it to people. Try to do it in love. Whatever you're doing, let it be done in love. Check your heart. Make sure that love is always present when you do it. Am I telling you to be all mushy with somebody with a grown man? No, I'm not saying that at all. You can get in somebody's collar, especially if they need you. It might be some of these young men that need you to get into that, you know, into their collar. Like, yo, yo, chill out, bro. And then later on, you can go and talk to them, you know, pull them over to the side and just let them know. Look, this is the reason why I said what I did to you, because you're doing this or you're doing that. And it was you were sacrificing the song and that wasn't necessary. So let me show you. Let me show you. And like once you go back and they know that you're doing it out of love. Instead of you doing it out of place of trying to embarrass them and trying to make them feel bad, they will receive it. They'll receive it. Uh, man, I'm missing all kind of stuff. That's true because we can learn from each other. Hey, your bass lesson really helped. Man, thank you, Salty. I wish uh, there was a jam map that we can share and steal licks from each other. Huh, that might be an idea. Uh, how do you manage the situation where 
but despite your growth and consistency as a young musician, you still get turned down for gigs and stuff because the older musicians are right there. Be patient. CO, uh, if I'm saying your name correctly, be patient. Patience, patience, patience. Um, here's the thing. Yeah, I'm not going to get super deep, but what God has for you is for you. So if you're not getting certain gigs, it might just mean it's not your time yet. It's, it's that simple. And what you do in the meantime, if you can't find a lane, you keep perfecting what you do, working on your craft. And if you can't find a necessary lane that you're looking for for an outlet, create one. Create the outlet you're looking for. Uh, good morning, Jermaine. You're definitely on point. What is your favorite music to play? I'll get to that in a second. But you have to you have to make sure you don't become bitter uh, because you're not getting whatever the opportunities are that you think you deserve and you've been working and you've been doing this and you've been doing that. If you're not getting the opportunities and the gigs, you have to create it if you're not going to wait. If you're in a position where you can't wait, for the next opportunity because you need something to happen. Now, create the opportunity you need to happen. Do what you have to do to create that opportunity. How do you create that opportunity? Okay, um, maybe these gigs are all taken up around the city. Go figure out another place if you if you need just an outlet to play. Put you a band together. Uh, find, a, find, a, uh, find some like-minded musicians who may be experiencing some of the same thing. Y'all put a set together Polish that set. Make sure it's good. Don't put junk out there. But polish that set. Make sure it's really good. Now, you put um, a, a situation together like go talk to a local restaurant. See what's their slowest night. I did this uh, a few years back. I went and talked to a restaurant owner because I felt like I was not playing out as much as I wanted to. Not because I didn't have any gigs, but because I didn't have an outlet for my original music at the time. And I'm like, I needed something else to just feel like I'm, I feel like I was going crazy in the four walls always playing. I had albums and everything out, but because I wasn't getting the calls and the bookings for my band or whatever to come out and play, I'm like, I need to be playing my own stuff. I feel like I'm going crazy. I need to be playing. So I went and talked to a local restaurant uh, that was near my house. And I went and talked to him, asked him, hey, what's your slowest night? He told me, hey, Tuesday night is my slowest night. Cool. My schedule was wide open on Tuesday night. I wasn't doing it. At the time, I wasn't doing anything on Tuesday night. So let me go. Hey, how about this? How about I come in and I play, you know, for your guests that's coming? This wasn't even a typical musical venue. I went in and I said, hey, let me let me play for your people. If they allow that, you know, if they allow the noise, you got to be mindful of all of that type of stuff. They have the space and the noise the regulations. You got to be mindful of all that stuff. But he agreed and let me came in and I played my original music. I had some merchandise that I was selling. I had my CDs that I was selling. He gave me like 50 bucks. Wasn't much money, but between that, it was gas money. It really, it was just spending money, to be honest, because, I mean, I was like five minutes from my house, from this place. So I got to do the gig. I created my own gig for my own music. I got the exposure for other people to hear my music. I got the instant feedback to know some things that I could use to improve my playing, to improve my performance and all that type of stuff. And I was getting paid at the same time and selling my original music. Was I selling a lot? No, but I was still moving it. And I was moving units and I was getting that outlet to say, hey, I am doing something. Now with social media, you can take that type of environment where you have a little restaurant gig Set your phone and set your camera up, and now you film that. You get the footage of your performance, and you put it out. Now, this is information y'all are getting for free. Now, I normally would charge for this type of stuff. But now, you set up, and you get the, the footage from that performance of you by yourself or your band or your group. You start your YouTube channel, or you start your Instagram page, and you start putting that stuff out. You put that content out. Make sure it's good and it's quality. You put that content out. Now people see what you're doing. Now folks are trying to figure out who you are. Because here's the thing. The hungry will always come and eat. If you have something that's considered food for somebody, the hungry will come and eat. If you put it out there, the folks who are hungry, they will come and eat it. So the ones who are trying to find you, once you start putting yourself out there, they will begin to find you. And now you'll begin to get the calls that you need for these particular gigs. So, yeah. Hold on. Let me, let me go here. 
and, and see some, uh, make sure I'm responding. All right. See, so hopefully I uh, answered your question. Social skills you need. Yep, that definitely helps you to develop some social skills. Uh, good morning, Jermaine. You're definitely on point. What is your favorite music to play? Okay, my favorite music to play, I'm not sure I have one. Um, I love all music. Um, if I had to narrow it down to a few genres, it would probably be uh, gospel music and all of the subgenres included in gospel music. Uh, jazz, like jazz fusion. And those are probably my top two that I love playing. But I love like all types of music. But if I had to give you the top two, different forms of jazz, different forms of gospel. And so those are those are my top two that I enjoy the most. Um, have you seen a keyboardist uh, playing the bass on a keyboard when there was already bass? Uh, I answered that one already. <laughs> uh, let's see here. Everyone wants to hear licks. But does that really get you gigs um, as a pocket bass? It depends. It depends where you are, who you are, what you're playing, and how good you are at playing the licks. How good your delivery is at the licks. Um, people like the licks. People like the fancy stuff. But a lot of the gigs just require you to play the bass line and to be good and solid at it. But there are times that intensity increases and they do want some of the extra stuff they do want the bells and whistles as well because you know this you playing that all night that can get boring after a while for the masses so it depends on your audience and what they're looking for so that 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 question is relative i mean it is relative to whatever whatever genre you're in and whatever you're trying to do. So that's the best way I can say that. Um, good morning. Thanks for being part of the few that are sharing your gift with Anthony, man. It's my pleasure. And guys, I know it's way past the hour that I wanted to be on here, but hopefully I did uh, giving you guys some good information and really quick again, do me a, a huge favor. If you haven't picked up any of my merch, I need y'all to grab that. Say it with your strength. Let me put this camera down so y'all can really y'all can really dig in. This is not the only model of the shirt that you can get. Um, I have my, if you look at any of my videos at the bottom, you'll see all this merchandise. You'll see this shirt. Uh, if you want to see more shirts like this and the different types of designs that I have, click on my store. Visit my store and you'll see all these different shirts. The Say It With Your Strings gear. There is some Jermaine Morgan TV gear. If you want uh, merchandise, rather. If you want some of that merch so you can rock it and, and post it on your social media, I'm greatly appreciative of this. All this information I'm sharing with you guys, a lot of it was not free for me. I had to pay. <laughs> I had to play, pay with my life for a lot of this stuff. Um, but I don't mind sharing this information with you. But do me a huge favor. Uh, go visit my website. Go get the backing track that I was playing earlier. Uh, go purchase some stuff. Go, go do whatever you got to do to... Get this word out. Let people know what you're getting, what the information you're getting from. Can you can your merch be purchased through Amazon too? No, it's not on Amazon. My songs, my music is on Amazon, um, but the other stuff is not uh, like these these shirts. Now you can get this particular shirt uh, directly from my website. You can order this shirt today. You can get it. But I also have this particular shirt. If you look in my um, merchandise up under this again. Up under this video, you can see my. If you're doing it from a phone, you probably have to scroll up after the live is finished, I guess. But yeah, go pick up some merchandise, y'all, and, and and post it. Let people know where you got it from, what it is. Let let people know if you're being helped by these live broadcasts. Share them. Let some folks know about it. Um, and that helps me to continue. The reason why I'm saying that that helps me to continue creating content, cause of uh, my lights that I got up in here, they don't care. <laughs> <laughs> for real i'm a content creator that's what i do and so i'm creating this stuff hopefully it, it inspires you and let me know give me some feedback about the designs some different say it with your strings designs that you would like to see i got the classic tees that i have there and if it's something else that you'd like to see let me know give me some feedback drop it in the comments some other stuff you like to see some other colors that you would like to see look this is not just my world this is y'all's world too y'all are here y'all rocking with me so let me know what you'd like to see 
And be sure to go and grab my music off iTunes, Amazon. You can get the hard copies from my website. I have hard copies available. If y'all still listen to hard copies. If y'all old school, y'all still got some CDs. I got CDs available still. So hate to be pushing the merch, but at the same time, how else will you know about it if I don't tell you that it's available? So yeah, this shirt is my brand. Say it with your strings. If you see, say it with your strings on Facebook or on Instagram. That's my brand. So yeah, go out and support your boy. Support and uh, yeah, um, the strings that I use. I normally don't mention this type of stuff, but the strings that I use, I use SIT. Uh, they are supporting me, so I, I will speak up for my companies that support me. SIT strings are what I use. These are the types of strings that I use. Power wound. I have custom gauges. I use um, the 40, 60, 80, 95, and 125 is what I use in terms of my this nickel strings, power wound, extra light. Go get some SIT strings. They sell them everywhere. Get to our center, your local music store, whatever. Uh, you want to know, go to the website. Check me out. I'm there on the website as an artist as well. Um, Pig Hog Cables is what I use. I have great cables that I use. Just in case some of you guys are interested. I use Pig Hog Cables. Pighog.com. Pig, I think it's pighogcables.com. Just type in pig hog on Google. It'll show you. Uh, what else am I missing? I use... Uh, what else? What else? What else? What else? Y'all help me out. What else am I missing? Groove Gear. The fret wraps by Groove Gear. Groove Gear has a whole bunch of cool stuff that you can use. What are the, what are the fret wraps for? Uh, they mute the string. Who is that? Hey, uh, morning. JM and everyone, nice to be here again. Yeah, man, good to see you. Oh, and not good to see you, but good to see your message pop up on my screen. So, yeah, I use Groove Gear. Check them out. Um, WB Gear. If some of you are advanced players, you're doing some stuff, you got some stuff going on, you're looking for or looking to try to get into the endorsement situation, go to WBGear.com. Mention my name. Tell them Jermaine Morgan sent me. And I am want to apply for this endorsement situation. I don't know if that will help you get an endorsement, but you can try it. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so if you want to try to uh, look into this endorsement situation, go to WBGear.com. They have several brands that are umbrellaed up, uh, umbrella up under them. Oh, yeah. Also, I use Reunion Blues cases. I was using iGig guitar cases. I still have my iGig cases, but I'm endorsing uh, Reunion Blues Um uh, cases, bass and guitar cases. Who else am I missing? I know I'm missing somebody else. Warrior basses, uh, of course. I use warrior basses and I have a signature bass on the way. Both these are, this is my signature six string. This is my signature five string, but I'm having uh, like an official because these, like, there's Warrior Bass is a custom made. So, basically, what I mean by signature, each bass is signature to, to the player. The basses are custom made. If you buy the basses from the company, each one is signature to the player. So, if anybody's confused about what does he mean by signature, I thought he got a signature coming out. Yes, but each bass that Warrior makes is signature to the player because it's a custom, you know, it's a custom shop. But I have a signature series that's getting ready to come out of the Isabella bass this bass right here but for me it's going to be a combination hold on camera stop it's going to it's going to be a combination of these two bases okay so basically you're going to get the best of both worlds from me um it's going to be this body style but it's going to have a lot of attributes as well from this bass so you're going to get the best of both worlds from both of my bases and it's going to be my signature series warrior so start hitting up Warriors. Start asking them about it. Hit up their Facebook page. Yo, where's the Jermaine Morgan signature base? Go ahead and hit them up wherever. On their Instagram, hit them up on their Facebook. Ask them about it. I say this every week, but I want to let y'all know it's coming. It's on the way. And uh, yeah, so start asking them about it. I think I've covered all the bases. I've been on here way too long. Y'all know I don't stay on here this long. I feel bad for the people who are watching the replay. But for everybody that came and rocked with me early this morning, man, thank y'all so much. I appreciate all of the support. Thank you for the questions. Thank you for chiming in. Next week, come with your questions ready. I'll be back and I'll be sharing. I'll be giving whatever I need to give. There will be a video going up this week. Uh, if you haven't checked out my latest videos, be sure to do that. 
as well, go visit my channel. If you're on your way to work, do it when you get off work. If you need some help practicing, visit JermaineMorgan.net. Become a monthly member. Join the movement. Join the base lessons. I'm giving you the stuff that you need. You ain't got to sit here and try to figure all this stuff out on your own. But anyway, thank y'all, man. I am out of here to everybody that's left watching this. Thank y'all for rocking with me. I appreciate it greatly. I will see you.